Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today our Bible teacher, Rabbi Schneider, shares one of the mysteries of creation. People often attempt to discredit the existence of God by questioning His origins. So today in an insightful message that's aptly titled, Where Did God Come From? Rabbi Schneider addresses their objections, and we'll begin our discussion by diving into passages from Genesis, Exodus, Isaiah, and the New Testament book of John. If you'd like to take some notes, you'll find Rabbi's study guide online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. But right now, let's journey back to the beginning. Here's Rabbi Schneider to share his insights. I'm excited to get into the first chapter of the book of Genesis. We call it in Hebrew, Bereshit, the book of beginnings. We're going to be looking at the mystery of creation. I want to look at two separate aspects. First of all, I want to look at the nuts and bolts of creation. And then I want to establish in your heart the reason that Father God created you through Yeshua, His Son. Beloved ones, let's pray. Father God, in Yeshua's name, I ask you to penetrate the depths of our being with truth. Father, your word is truth. We ask to receive revelation now that we would better understand, Father, our purpose on earth in Jesus' name and for your glory. Father, we pray that the love of God would birth in our hearts in a greater dimension through the receiving of your word. Amen and amen. Once again, we're looking at two separate areas or categories. The first one is I want to go through several verses in the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, and talk about some of the distinctive features of the creation process. And then we're going to look more specifically at verse 26 and 27 of chapter 1 to better understand why it is that the Lord created you and me. If you think about it, He created us for a very specific purpose. And if we're going to identify our purpose for life and our destiny, we're going to have to understand and comprehend why the Creator chose to birth us in the first place. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord, bless His name, abides forever. Let's go now together, Genesis chapter 1, Bereshit chapter 1. We're going to look there now in verses number 1 through 3. Hear the word of God. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. I want to point out certain words here that we glance over and don't fully recognize some of what is intended here. Let's begin with the word beginning. In the beginning, we think of the beginning and we think of the beginning of creation. And I really want to stress to you, this word beginning is the beginning of creation. It's not the beginning of God. God has no beginning. He's unlimited. He's infinity. He has no starting point. This is what is so unique about God. He's just beyond that. That's why when the Lord first revealed himself to Moses in Exodus chapter 3 and Exodus chapter 6, Moses said to him at the burning bush, who should I say sent me? What's your name? And the father answered Moses and said, I am that I am. I will be who I will be. In other words, he's beyond naming. Again, he's beyond Fully knowing, the Lord said to Moses, you can see my back, but you can't see my face. Don't misunderstand me, beloved church. We can know God, but there's always more of God. We'll always be discovering him. He's so far beyond us. He's so infinite that we can't fully ever grasp him. He's incomprehensible fully because he's God. He has always been. There's continuously new life bubbling out from him. He's always more. 
And this concept of him always being more is connected to the term abundant life that Jesus used. Jesus said, I will give you life and I'll give it to you more abundantly. You see, when you were a child, life was so enthralling. It was such a journey. It was such an adventure when you were experiencing everything for the first time when you saw God's creation for the first time, when you saw animals for the first time, when you saw the flowers and the sunset, when you had your first boyfriend or girlfriend, everything was new and you were just so caught up in the drama of life. But the older we got, right? We began to lose our sense of adventure. We began to lose our sense of wonder. But you see, what has happened, and the reason that as we age, we lose that sense of wonderment is because we've seen it before. We've seen the flowers, we've seen the animals, we've had our first boyfriend, we've had our first girlfriend, all the things that were so enthralling when we experienced them for the first time no longer captivate us the same way because listen, they're no longer new. But God, he's always more and therefore he's always new. I'm trying to help you understand, in the beginning, we're not talking about the very beginning because God has no beginning. He is the creator. He is the cause that has no cause. It's impossible, as I've been sharing, for the human mind to grasp this. How God, how this infinite being could have always been that he came from nowhere but in the beginning means it's the beginning of our story. It's the beginning of the formation of the earth. It's the history of mankind. But once again, church, God has no beginning. I want you to be awed by God. I don't want you to ever lose your sense of wonderment as to who he is. He is so big, beloved. He's beyond religion. He is God. And so when the Lord said to Moses, when Moses said, what is your name? And God said, I am who I am. I am that I am. And I will be whom I will be. What the Lord was saying to Moses is, I'm beyond naming. I'm beyond naming. You see, when we name something, when we name somebody, we put ourselves in a position of superiority over that thing that we've named. When a scientist discovers something, they name what they've discovered. God said to Adam, name the animals. I've given you dominion over them. And there's truth in the sense that we know Yeshua's name. We know the name Jesus. We know the name Yeshua. That was his name in the flesh, right? When he walked upon the earth 2,000 years ago. And we know that God revealed to Moses that his name was yud heh vav -Hey, often pronounced Yahweh. But the meaning of Yahweh is I am who I am. I will be whom I will be. It's from the root word I am or I will be. And the unique thing about God's name, Yahweh, is that it's not a noun, but it's a verb. And the verb tense of Father's name, Yahweh, is the form of, listen, continuous, unfinished action. God is always more. He's always becoming. He's always, you know, there's just more and more and more and more and more and more and more of God. We can't just name him and think that he's a static being. He's beyond that, beloved. He's beyond that. And I hope you're grasping this because the scriptures tell us over and over again that we should be awed by God, that we should fear him in the holy sense of the word. And when we realize that he's infinity, that he has no beginning or no end, that he's the alpha and the omega, he's always been, he always is, and he'll always be, we begin to get a sense of how big our creator is. And realizing this in a deeper way, we begin to marvel and capture that sense of awe that our creator wants us to live in before him. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back. But first, did you know that you can receive real-time encouragement straight from Rabbi through text message? Visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the link that says Rabbi Text Me, or you can text the keyword Rabbi to the number 88777. Rabbi sends these special text messages as the Holy Spirit leads, and he looks forward to connecting with you 
real soon. Thank you for remembering that Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a listener-supported ministry. Rabbi Schneider's teachings are made possible through the generous gifts from people like you, who understand the importance of sharing the good news of Jesus' return. Because of you, we are changing lives all over the world. Give online by visiting discoveringthejewishjesus.com or call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. And now let's get back to Rabbi's message. I want to focus now, church, on the Hebrew word in verse number one for God. Once again, we read, in the beginning, God. Now, the Hebrew word that's used here in the Torah, in the original text, is the word, listen now, Elohim. Elohim is is the plural form of the word El, and the word El is God. It's interesting here that we find that God refers to himself, listen now, in the plural. If he referred to himself in the singular, it would say, in the beginning, El, God created the heavens and the earth. But it doesn't say El, it says Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim, God's plural, created the heavens and the earth. Now, we know there's only one God. In fact, the greatest declaration of Israel is Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu. That's related to this word Elohim. It means our God. Eloheinu means our God. Elohim, God, plural. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. What that means is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, Eloheinu, our God, the Lord is one. So once again, we're affirming the oneness of God. So if God is one, if there's only one God, why then does the scripture say here in the beginning, Elohim, God, plural, created the heavens and the earth? And the reason is, beloved ones, is because of the multiplicity of the nature of God. Within God, there is relationship. God, listen now, is multidimensional. He's manifested himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's one, and yet he's multidimensional. For example, that when the Lord created man, he created man, we read here in the first chapter, the 27th verse, that he created man, male and female. He created he them in his own image. So within God, there is both the masculine and the feminine. We know in the scriptures that he's referred to as he, the father part of God, the masculine part of God, but God also has feminine attributes. Once again, verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. And so the female nature is also part of God's nature. The point is, is that within God, there's a multi-dimensional aspect. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we read here in the first verse, in the beginning, Elohim, God plural. And the reason he's referred to in the plural is because of the relationship that exists within him between the different parts of his nature. Let me say that again. The reason God is referred to in the plural in verse number one of the first verse of our Bible, in the beginning God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. The reason that he's referred to in the plural is because of the fact that the plural reflects the multi-dimensional nature of his person. That within him, there's a multi-dimensional nature element that there are different parts of him all contained in his oneness. If you look with me for a second in the 26th verse of this same chapter, Elohim, once again, God, plural, Elohim. Then God said, listen, let us, why does he use the word us? Focus on the word us. Then God said, let us, why did God say us? Who is he talking to? Listen again. Then God said, let us, you see, us speaks of what? Relationship, and it's plural. It's you and me, right? God said, let us make man in 
our image. Once again, the word our speaks of more than one. There's only one God, but within the Godhead, within God, there's a multi-dimensional projection and essence of his person, that there's relationship within him, that the father's relating to the son who's in his bosom, that there's a male and female aspect of God that's all contained in the Godhead. God's one, but there's a, once again a multi dimensional nature to his person. And so God said, let us, plural, make man in our plural image. Now I know this is a lot to grasp, but be aware I'm sticking accurately to the biblical text here. You're asking yourself, does it make sense? How can God be one and yet be multidimensional? How can God be one and yet he's manifested himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? How can God be one, and yet he's got both male and female aspects that are in relationship within him? Beloved, it's beyond comprehension because God is spirit. And God said, my thoughts are above your thoughts and my ways are above your ways, even as the heavens are higher than the earth. Don't expect to understand this. Let me ask you this question, church, to put it in perspective. Can you understand how God has always been? We can only ask the question, well, where did he come from? We can't comprehend how he's always been. We function through the laws of cause and effect. We think, but how did he get here? Where did he come from? But you see, God is beyond our ability to fully know because he's spirit and he's so far above us, beloved ones, that we'll never fully grasp him. And that's what makes it so exciting. And that's what puts you and I in awe of him. What a great message. We pray that you were blessed today by what was shared. And now Cynthia, Rabbi Schneider's wife, is going to join him in the studio, and they're gonna share some closing thoughts on today's message. What a great broadcast today. Rabbi, I love how you just expand our mind. You expand us into the, the width and the depths of God. Of course, none of us can fully go that far. But I love the Spirit of God in you that has equipped you to help us as we are listening and grabbing a hold of the teaching, expand our mind out of the boxes that we put God into to understand the expanses that God is. I mean, we'll never really know how big he is because there's always more of him. We'll never come to a place where we can like see God in such a way that he's in this box that we see him in. Right, right. Because he's so far beyond that all we can do is continue to receive new revelation from him. We'll always know him because we're in relationship with him, but we'll never fully know him because there's always more of him. I used to think that my faith was boring. You know, go to church, sing some hymns, Great and, example. But this this is just the Spirit of God living, active, always bubbling up with something new. It's just, it's it has no beginning, no end. God just has depths and riches for us. It this. helps us understand why in the scriptures, whenever someone encountered the Lord, the response was they fell on their face. I mean, he's so much bigger than our puny religion. I mean, this is God we're talking about. This is a living reality. Yes. And God's calling us out of religion yeah. to know him. Right, you know, one of the things you spoke of was how Elohim is a plural. And he says, let us make man in our image. And it's a beautiful thing to see how God is one. The Jews, sometimes your friends and brothers and sisters would say, well, I believe in one God, not your multiple gods, but they don't understand that they're the one God is spoken of, of having that plurality in Elohim. We've received the scriptures from the Jewish people. Messiah himself came as a Jew, and yet the Jewish people need to come into the understanding that Yeshua HaMashiach really is the Messiah, and that the truth that he proclaimed is the truth indeed. In fact, it was interesting when Jesus was on earth, many that observed his ministry said, this man teaches with authority, 
not as our leaders do, not as the scribes and Pharisees do. When Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, he was revealing the fullness of God. I love the book of Hebrews chapter one. It says that in times past, the Lord spoke to the Hebrew people through the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways. But in these last days has spoken to us through his son, through whom the world was created and whom is the exact representation of his nature. You see, Jesus came to bring us into a relationship with the limitless God whose glory goes on forever and ever and ever. This is not about religion. This is about reality. This is about relationship. And Jesus came for you. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. And Rabbi's message today was titled, Where Did God Come From? And well, Rabbi reveals the deeper meaning of the Hebrew text, and that helps us discover the mysteries of creation. And we want to extend a heartfelt thanks to our partners. It's because of your faithful partnership that we've reached people in almost every country in the world, including Israel and the Middle East. Your support this year, it'll help us share these profound truths with those who are searching for meaning. Rabbi? I was studying the Torah, the first five books of our Bible, Genesis through Deuteronomy, and I was astonished at how precisely Father God spoke into every area of the children of Israel's lives. I mean, he addressed it all, how to dress, what to eat, how to handle yourself in business, every area of life, even about safeguarding their property. And I know we're not under the law, but beloved, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. God wants to be involved in every area of our lives. And obviously, this includes our finances. If this ministry, beloved, is blessing you, if it's challenging you, if it's affecting you, I want to ask you, would you lift up your heart to Father God to see if you feel Him nudging you to make a financial contribution to honor Him through discovering the Jewish Jesus? Beloved, it's because of you we're reaching the world for Jesus. Thank you for your love and for your financial support. God bless you and shalom. To give or become a monthly partner with us this year, just call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. Or you can sign up to give a monthly donation from the Rabbi Schneider mobile app. Just click the donate button in the middle of the home screen. And as an expression of our gratitude for your monthly partnership, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's Message of the Month, and it's available as a digital download. We'll also send you our engaging and insightful newsletter from Rabbi Schneider. He's prepared it each month, especially for you. And for our new monthly partners, we have an additional gift of appreciation, a handcrafted, authentic shofar from Israel. You know, the sound of the shofar, it's both a call and an invitation. We want people all around the globe to come to God with humble and repentant hearts so that they can be welcomed into the family. But the time is now. So please help us continue this mission of sharing God's plans, His purposes, and His promises regarding His Son's soon return by becoming a monthly partner today. Join with us. You'll find us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And now here's Rabbi Schneider to speak a sacred and special blessing over us before we wrap up our time together. The ironic blessing in the book of Numbers chapter 6 is not a blessing that comes from an impersonal being out there somewhere in the heavens. This special blessing comes from a person, Yahweh, God Almighty, our creator and maker. So receive God's blessing into your life right now. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yair Yahweh Panave Lecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panave Lecha Veasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries, and I'm Dustin Roberts. Be sure to join us tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider explains the mysteries of creation. That's coming up Thursday right here on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.